Hey, I'm clicking on my, there it is. Nope, nope. Oh, there you go. <laughs> there it hi. is. Hi, hi, hi. Hey, Lolly, welcome back. Thank you so much. I missed y'all. Yeah, you were, you're working, you're doing five jobs now. I am. <laughs> we're making it work. <laughs> we're pleased. We're pleased to have you. Um, so uh, this is Watch Me Work, and we get together uh, pretty much every week, um, and we uh, work together, and then we talk with you about your work and your creative process. Um, I'm SLP. We've been doing this show for about I don't know, forever. No, about 14 years. We started in the lobby of the public theater. And since uh, COVID shut down, we moved to Zoom and where we were happy and where we are very grateful to the public theater and HowlRound for hosting us and helping us organize all this, especially folks like Lolly who help us figure it all out every week. What we're going to do is we're going to work together. And then I'm going to take questions about your work and your creative process while we don't have the bandwidth to have you, you know, show us your work or read from your work or anything like that. We do have plenty of time to talk about process. And if you want to have a, if you have a question about your creative process, please, uh, Lolly is going to tell you how to get in touch. Go yeah. Lolly. Thank you. So if you're here in Zoom with us, you can ask a question by using the raise your hand function. It should be in the reactions tab, which is likely at the bottom of your screen. But if you have any trouble finding it, you can just let me know in the chat and I'll help you out. Or if you're watching live with us on HowlRound, you can ask us questions via the Public Theater's Twitter or Instagram accounts or via the Watch Me Work Twitter account, which is at Watch Me Work SLP with the hashtag HowlRound. That's hashtag H-O-W-L-R-O-U-N-D. Fantastic. Okay. I have my timer. Here it is. We're getting ready to go. Boom.
Yay. Okay. It's that time we've been working for 20 minutes. And now we can take questions about your work and your creative process. If you have a question, let us know. Looks like we have a question from Charlie. You should be able to unmute now. Charlie, how you doing? Good. Sorry to ask uh, another question. I'm happy for other people to jump in, but it's kind of quiet out there. Um, boy, so many questions. Let's start with this one. How, how much do you know about your characters when you start a project? Great question. Great question. How much do I know about, or how much does one need to know about one's characters, right? Um, it, it depends on, on the, you know, if you have an idea of their name, if you have an idea of maybe what they're up to, i.e. why you're interested in them or why they, they're, they you know, say, come here, I have to tell you a story, you know, or I'm in the middle of something, I want you to watch and, and, and write about it. Um, then uh, that's enough to go on. I don't think one has to do extensive character biographies to get started, but if you feel more comfortable doing those, then do them. Uh, in my experience, you find out a lot about the characters by writing or, or, you know, it's like a portrait. You know, you have an idea of what you're gonna paint and you start painting and you find out so much more about it by doing it. Um, who said that? I know. I know by going where I have to go, you know, so so if you feel comfortable getting a whole big 20 page biography or a one sheet of biography, uh, that's great. If you know their name and what they're about, that that might also be good enough. Does that make sense? It depends on what you need. Yeah, I'm sort of curious how it works for you. I've, I've played with oh. it both ways. Yeah. Uh -huh. No, but this is, you know, the, uh, oh, I uh, maybe yeah, I didn't say that this week. So watch me work. Yeah, the title is misleading. It's about your work and your creative process. So when you <laughs> ask me a question, I tend to make it about you. Fair uh, enough. Fair <laughs> enough. Not not trying to probe. Just I, you know. No, no, no. I, I, because because I mean, I mean, me. honestly, you know, everybody knows I've been, you know, writing plays for over forty years and novels and short stories and screenplays and poems and songs and everything. And I, in the, any, sometimes I know everything about the characters. Sometimes I, I just know their name. So it's really whatever, whatever, whatever. And I'm interested in what might work for, you know, what works for me on well, Tuesday might not work for me on a Friday. Yeah. I mean, I def, uh, a recent project spent a lot of time working up background ideas or whatever, mm -hmm. but then as, the piece proceeded and it got revised. It's like, oh no, that's not true. That you know, there, that's not who I thought this was. That kind of thing. Exactly. Which was fun, but also it's like maybe step back and say maybe not be so uh, so analytical going in. Exactly. Exactly. But then some people they need that guide rope, and so you know, you know, then then go ahead and and make it. Um, and uh, yeah. It, 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 so it's really what what you need. I try and once you, you know when you're writing a character biography, it's your your one page and you're like, okay, 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 I'm good. Then go for it. Then start writing. You know. Yeah. It's it's like we were talking to uh, somebody a couple of weeks ago. It's rule of thumb. How do, how does it make you feel? How do you feel about it? If, you, if you're feeling good, you know, great. If it's sounds like it's just an exercise or feels like it's just an exercise, then cut to the chase and start writing. But is there an argument to sometimes uh, dive in when it doesn't feel good? Uh, uh, no? Sure, sure, uh, sure, 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 sure. Um, for example, um, if you're in, a, if you're writing a, a work for hire, you know, you're working for producers or, you know, you, did you mention you had a writing partner on a- I did, yeah. Okay, okay so, so maybe you, you guys have different temperaments and, and and they say, hey, you know, enough of this character biography. We've already got, you know, 80 pages, you know, let's start. And you say, it doesn't feel good. Well, you might want to give it a try. 
um, if you're in a writing program and they you have something due soon and you feel like you've been spending too much time on the background stuff. But I've, I've also had times when it's like it doesn't feel good until I'm into it. It's like uh, I'm holding back. Let's just start putting stuff on the page and then the light part, you know, the clouds part and things start exactly. to happen. Yeah, exactly. 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 So you, you like you say, you got to try different things. You know, cool. you have to be you have to be flexible enough to to try different things. Um. Thank you, Charlie. Thank you. <laughs> Looks like we have a question from Jillian. Hello. Hey, Jillian. Um, hey, yeah, got blue hair this weekend. I'm in New York now. <laughs> hey. Yeah, I'm usually in Vegas when I call in. Um, oh, wow. yeah. So this question is about like theme, theatrical elements and action. Mm -hmm. So I'm... One thing that is really effective in plays and I'm loving is just actions and theatrical elements that tie into theme. And so I kind of find I'm struggling with this chicken or egg argument. Like, does the theme come first or does the, the story come first? And then you discover the theme. And I've been reading a lot about it and talking to a lot of people and I'm getting conflicting answers, I guess. And so I think I'm struggling with it because I know my theme. And so now it's about what theatrical elements can I put in play or what actions or things can I have characters teach each other that speak to that theme. And I just want to know if you had any guidance there on oh, how to yeah. sort through those waters. Yeah. <laughs> So well, we'll use the what we spoke with Charlie about. How are you feel? Does it feel good the way you're doing it? Um, no, I I feel kind of I feel kind of all over the place. Uh, it, it some things feel good, so I think some things feel good. As in, just I'll free write and then go back and look and see. Like I'll just go in like I'm discovering myself, and I'm like, well, what did I write? Or what are these characters saying? And take my writer's hat off to sort of be an investigator of what was said. Um, mm -hmm. But so that works, but you know, it, it feels like a very messy process, but maybe that's just what it is. And maybe there's no, maybe there's right. not a cleaner way. Right, right, right. So, and just so I'm, I'm clear about what you mean, cause I'm, I'm not entirely sure. Um, theme by when you say theme, you mean like what the work is about? What, what do you mean by theme? Yeah, I guess when I say theme, I mean, what is the work about the premise, the question that I'm putting out that I'm not necessarily, I don't necessarily have an answer for, but the question or the C kernel that gets me telling the story and what I'm exploring. Okay. And when you say theatrical elements, what do you mean? I mean, things like, uh, you know, a prop that represents something um, that ties into the theme or like a light, like a specific lighting cue or a specific action, um, you know, and, and I just wonder from a writer's perspective, you know, are those things that, that you consciously put into the piece or are those things that people discovered later? Right. Okay, great. Okay, let's see. Um, how do I answer this? Um, that's a great question. It's a very uh, specific way of creating something, say a play or a screenplay uh, or a novel or whatever, or store, a story. Um, it's not how I go about creating things at all. Okay. If anyone asks me, what's the theme to fill in the blank something I've written, I go, I don't know. I have no, I'm, I have no interest in theme and the things that we find in say a play that I've written or a novel or whatever, 
are very carefully chosen, but not because of the theatrical re- you know, resonance. Da, 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 da. No. Mm-hmm. no. Okay. If I told you a story of, say, um, you know, Hansel and Gretel, I'm telling you a story. I'm really interested in a story. Tell me a story. Mm-hmm. The way that, you know, maybe, you know, your, your, uh, you know, mom, dad, auntie, grandma, primary caregiver, favorite babysitter, you know, told you. Once upon a time, there was a young woman and she had really long toes. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It's a story. So I'm, I'm, I come to it from story, from character, from what's going on. What am I seeing? So it's more of a, Jillian, it's more like I have, I put all my faith in the power of the story. Hmm. And I'm more interested in the power of the story than I am in the analytical prowess of somebody who will come and read it later. Okay, got it. Yeah, no, that, that, that resonates and feels right. I think where I get tied in is... I, when you join writer groups or you're in circles or people reading your work, there's often the question of like, well, what's the theme? What's the theme? How's this tied to theme? What's the theme? And I, I'm just, there's part of me that feels like that's not my business, <laughs> but, uh, you know, that's not always a well-received answer. So I wanted to, to kind of just bring that here. So yeah. It's, it's, yeah. Yeah. And that's, and that's, uh, you know, if a certain group of writers or group of artists create in a certain way and they have been uh, taught or they have learned on their own, or they have picked up the habit of asking certain kinds of questions about work and you come in there and you don't work that way, then Mm -hmm. you're the odd one out and you're thought of as, you know, wrong in some way. Um, uh, And I would say that you know, I mean, I, I really cherish um, scholars, you know, or critics or dramaturgs or, you know, artistic directors who are super smart and say, hey, this is about, you know, and they're, they're figuring it out or producers and they, you know, they're figuring mm-hmm. out the, the marketing people. Oh, my God, the way they can frame stuff and and excite audiences, which is amazing. And it's a whole big talent and a skill and all that. Um. Yeah. So you have a marketing meeting and they ask you about what's it about? What's the story? What's the theme when it's written? Mm-hmm. And to it, I, 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 while I can respect that way of creating because people do it, <laughs> you know, it's yeah. not something I, 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 I don't create that way. And I, fi- I find that if you see, you know, so so I'm going to put a, a water bottle on the table in act two, and that's going to signify that, you know, the, the, the drought, the desert of their relationship and how they need water. That's all you're going to get. Yeah. But you're, it's, that's all you put it. You're going to put it in there. It, it, it's going to mean something. The audience can get that meaning that you put in there and hooray. And the audience says, yeah, I understand. I got it. I'm in the club. Um, instead of, instead of rich storytelling where there's a whole lot going on, there's Mm -hmm. 500 ways to understand, to get Hamlet, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, um, and I don't know how Shakespeare constructed it, but it seems more from a very strong storytelling, uh, a foundation of strong storytelling. Yeah. Okay. Thank so, you. That was very well, helpful. Tell a story. Imagine you're, you know, five years old and Jillian, I'm going to tell you a story. Mm-hmm. Once there was a person named, you know, your main character. Right. They were interested in da 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 da. You know, and then they did that. And then they met mm-hmm. a, uh, wow, that's interesting. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? Tell yourself yeah. a, story. a good story. Okay. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Great question. Really great question. Thank you. Thank you. Aiden. 
So this is kind of building off the question that was just asked, but if you're starting writing a piece and you're only focusing on story kind of rather than the themes and ideas of the piece, how do you know that your story is going to resonate and matter kind of once it is finally constructed? Just because I feel like if I have the a platform or a voice to kind of share my work with people, I want to make sure that I am talking about something that matters and I am saying something that's important. And so I worry that like going in with like just the story lens that I'm going to kind of end up with a story that can be nice, but that doesn't really, isn't really going to make the impact or change that I want. Great question, Aiden. Um, and this is, you know, yeah, going out on a limb here, or maybe not, maybe going into a whole tree, maybe it's a whole tree, it's not just a limb. I feel, this is, again, this is just my opinion. This is so my opinion. If it matters to you, Aiden, then I want to hear that story. Every story that is told doesn't resonate with everybody. You know, there are writers these days going, they ask me, SOP, what, what, you know, they, what, what, what trends should I, should I write about? You know, because because maybe, um, you know, oh, oh, I don't know. This summer pink was really in. And so should I write a story about the color pink? You know, you know what I'm saying? Um, I, I want to hear what's interesting to you. If you write it deeply and with feeling, if you tell me a good story, maybe it's not going to resonate with every single person in the world, but it will resonate with somebody else. And that's the artistic chance that you have to embrace. If it's meaningful to you, you as a human being, it will, it will be meaningful to somebody else. And if it's not meaningful to anybody else, at least you've written something that's meaningful to you. And that's the game we're playing here. That's the, that's the, that's the game. That's the arts. You know what I mean? Um, or, or if you speak your truth, it's going to resonate with somebody else. Does that, does that, does that make, yeah. So t does that make sense? I'm sorry, you're, you're muted, but I think I see your mouth moving. You should be able to. Yes. Yeah, sorry, I muted myself and then it wouldn't let me. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Thank yeah. you so much. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and not to worry about, you know, I have to write something that's topical, you know, <laughs> you know, uh, I mean, let, you, you know, maybe we look in, you know, online magazines or what, whatever, and they tell us that, you know, this summer, you know, you know, this kind of dress is in and they, so we have to buy that dress. But the arts are, it's a different kind of, a different kind of game. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank um, you so much. You're welcome. Great question. Good questions today, y'all. Thank you, Aiden. Uh, Louise. Hey, Louise. Hey. Okay, I'm following up on the first two ladies. And it's just a question. I know this is watch me work and it's about our work, not about your work per se. But the what comes to mind is, so the works that you've created, you've created them, they're out in the world, they're done. Do you, as a playwright, revisit in your head completed works, not revisit in the same, in the sense that, oh, I'm going to go back and change it, but do you find new discoveries in what you've created? Um, that's a great question, Louise. Uh, do I find new discoveries? Um, I, I think, um, I think people who produce the work find new discoveries because they're bringing themselves to the work, you know, mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, I don't necessarily find things because I am not looking at them. Do you, you know what I'm saying? I mean, maybe in a rare case, uh, but but usually when a work is is done and produced and it was 20 years ago or 30 years ago, whatever, I'm not really thinking about it. Okay. I'm I'm letting it go. I do the catch and release. I catch, I give it my best. I let it go, let it out into the world. Um, mm -hmm. If there's a revival, like the Broadway revival of Top Dog, I was involved in, you know, of course we discovered things and it was beautiful. Um, there's a play that I wrote in 
1990. And I was joking around with a friend, repeating some of the lines. We were repeating some of the lines. And I said, oh, now I finally understand what that means. Mm -hmm. So, so there, there are rare occasions where, where that kind of thing happens. I might go, oh, that's what that means. I thought it, I never really thought about it. Now I realize that it means that, you know, um, uh, the line uh, from Death of the Last Black Man in the whole entire world, aka the Negro Book of the Dead. The line is, you should write it down, you should hide it un under a rock. And I was like, oh, now I get it. You know, I wrote the play in 1990. Mm -hmm. So there's plenty of room for discovery, but I'm not you know, going over old texts and no, 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 but, uh, but people do, people write me all the time and come up to me all the time and say, Oh my gosh, you know what I realized about, I'm not like, Oh, that's amazing. It's cool. Thank you. Thank you. What about you, Louise? Do you have, um, when you, things that you've written in the past and you might go back and look at them or a friend might discuss them with you. Do you find that? Wow. I never, I never thought of it that way. Do you find revelations well, well, or revelations to be had? Well, just very briefly, my case is a little bit different because I do short experimental films. Mm -hmm. And so when I do a film and it's just like done and it's just like, whatever, you know, it's just kind of done and it's like, whatever, if you like it, you see something in it, then good. So I don't really revisit per se, but you may go back and see, oh, you saw that. Oh, okay. 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 So mm -hmm. I was just, just curious. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But let me just say that I've been doing my short films. I've been writing, but what this, like I say, the pearls of wisdom from you and the group and what has helped me is when uh, you had mentioned, just give yourself over to the work and it will reward you. Because I, like everybody else, I have a lot of stuff going on, but what I find is if you devote just a little bit of time, a little bit of time, every day, then it kind of, the work catches up to you. The work catches up to you and it supports what you're doing in the process. That's what my experience has been. Yes, ma'am. Yes, well said. Thank you for saying that, Louise. Thank you for reminding us all. That's really, really smart. Thank you, sister. Thanks, Louise. Uh, next up. Okay, wait, hold on. Let me, can you unmute? Are you good? Yeah, 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 okay, I'm great. good. <laughs> well, I don't know how to actually put this question, but I'm just wondering, um, you know, how much to reveal in writing? Because I go through a lot of things with my family and some of the things that have been said today really hit on it just makes me think even more about the questions I have about writing and sharing things with the public so basically um, I'm very different from the rest of my family mm -hmm. and um, you know and there are things that I want to write about and I do write about them but I don't share them but but then when I mention them to very close friends they'll say oh that's not so they say I have that same experience with my family so it makes me wonder about actually sharing the things that I go through, have gone through, go through, and the things that are out there uh, and whether or not to write it and share it. I don't know if that's clear or not. No, that's, it's a great question, Jay. And, and um, can, I, can I call you Jay? Do you, is that oh, yeah, word? no, no, that's fine. Okay, great. Okay, um, uh, it's, it's a great question. Um, and and to to for in varying degrees, you know, we all when we're creating something go through something like that. Uh, if you're very different from your family and they are perhaps not very accepting of the way you are in your authentic life, um, then it's it's even it's even a, a bigger barrier. Um, and to your point, you said, should I even write them? Well, of course, and you are writing them. It sounds like you're doing the work, which is really really great. Should you share it? Um, there are a couple of ways you know that you can share it. You can share it under a different name. You can share it um, and 
if your concern is that you might, I don't know, uh, create some kind of a riff, you know, in your family fabric, uh, that you don't want to do, then you might find ways in in like under a pseudonym to share it. Um, that's done a lot. Um, uh, in my and they're wonderful online places too. Uh, there's Medium, there's Substack, there's uh, a couple other places where you can submit. It's not like you have to go and to a publisher and get it published like in the olden days, you know. Um, so I would say if you feel the need to share it. Uh, then definitely find a way. It, you'll you'll you will find a way to share it if you use a different a name other than your own or other than the name that your family knows you by, and in a, on a platform that is more anonymous, you could say, um, and you can still gain a following and make money. Those kinds of things can happen. Yeah, that, yeah, that's really helpful. Um, mm -hmm. It would be even more helpful if you could put that in in the in the if you could write that down so that I can, you know, copy it because I don't remember, you know, the, okay, the word, I'll give you two words. One is called medium, like medium. Mm -hmm. The other is called, thank you, Lolly. And the other is called Substack. Okay. And there, and, and those are just two, you know, those are just two places online where people publish things. Um, I mean, they're also articles you know on any of these online publications slate salon huff post you know first person personal you have all a lot of places that are accepting uh works of writing by folks telling their stories um that kind of thing but uh, medium and substack are kind of fun um yeah, yeah. i okay. mean part of the um you know, i think the conflict is that i'm a, one i'm an artist mm -hmm. not at all uh they're totally different careers Two, I went to Smith, which I know you understand, having gone to Holyoke. Right. Uh, and so it's just a real difference there. And mm -hmm. so I've always been different. And now it's, it's the, the older I get, the more it just comes out. And I just want to shout, you know, because they're so different. And they, they just think that I'm just, you know, doing what. But I, mm -hmm. you know, they mm -hmm. don't understand that I am who I am. And those are the things that are of interest of me and other people. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh, I just want to. I just want to scream all the time. So uh -huh. no, really, scream and print. It's it's a great it's a great behavior. And check out Medium and Substack and see if you like those kinds of things that you're reading on there. It's a great way to get your voice heard. Really Thank great. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you, Jay. Uh, we have MC up. Hey, MC. Hey, you're back home. Yes. Yes. It was a it was a hard landing, you know, when you're in a magical land. Yes. You know, like, but um, yeah. My question is about deadlines. Yeah. Um, six months ago, in this, um, I said a, a, we were talking about game plan, you mm -hmm. know, mm -hmm. and and um, so I made that sticker, you know, game plan, and I committed sort of in this one of our watch me works that I would have my shitty first draft done in six, six months. Mm -hmm. And so it's, it's coming down to that time. And um, I'm not there with, there's a lot of shitty going on, but there's no, <laughs> the end yet. And part of it is that um, I put this just like you encourage, put this where I can see it, game plan deadline every day and mm -hmm. I put it there and then I sort of stopped looking at it because my characters that I, I was pretty confident I could get to the end of a story they just stopped talking to me and you know these other crazy characters started coming into my life like you know the last empress and stuff mm -hmm. so I went on I veered into that direction and so going in this new direction which brings me more joy and ease than the other characters who just, you know, but I'm committed to them because I want to get the story of my other people, Leo and Buddy, out. But mm -hmm. they weren't bringing joy. And they weren't. So I know I have a question in here. <laughs> and it, it's about how do I get to it? How do I? I need, I just need some cheerleading to get to the deadline. Mm -hmm. for one of these 
some mm-hmm. of these characters. Yeah. Joy, joy is a, joy is a funny thing. Joy is a funny thing, and when we associate joy with uh, the artistic process, I mean, it's it's. Let's see. Let me be tacky. I'll be tacky. It's it's not like making love. Making love is supposed to feel good, right? You're supposed to feel good. Work doesn't always feel good. Work, the creative process doesn't always feel good. And you can't judge it. Oh, it's great because it feels good. It's not like, you know, kissing and hugging on your sweetie. You know what I'm saying? Um, on, on, you know, on your intended. Um, it so, Sometimes it feels good. Sometimes it doesn't. Yeah. You know, like like Gypsy Rose Lee said, you got to take the rough for the smooth, you know. Um, so and I wonder, you know, you have a new character come up and uh, the last empress and 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 they're fabulous and wonderful. And does it feel good because it's new? Is are you still in the honeymoon stage, you know, and your other characters might it might be a little rough because you're, you know, in your seven seventh year of that relationship. You know, you know, I'm just mixing all my metaphors all over here. But you see what I mean? So if you how close are you to the deadline? Um, I'm about three weeks away. Okay, three weeks away in time. And how, okay, and how uh, how many pages do you have to write of the initial thing to make the deadline? Uh, it's not a, it's more of a chapter thing. I think I'm, I had my characters, the initial, the seven year itch ones, they've reached the climax. So now I'm just sort of writing towards the end the to the end so i'd say it's another 80 pages 50 no 50 pages great okay great great it's it's it's, so mc do let's do some math let's make it about math and not about inspiration you got 50 pages you got three weeks anybody know what that is three weeks or what three times 24 days right Ooh, 24 days. Okay, that's almost 25 days, right? So let's just say it's 24 days. Can you write two pages a day? Yes, I can write two pages a day. Great. Shitty, but because what you're teaching yourself, MC, is you're teaching yourself to finish, hmm. which is a skill. Yes. You're teaching yourself to finish. You're teaching yourself about commitment. You're teaching yourself to finish. You know, and, and again, different people say different things. You know, I'm not saying they're wrong and I'm right or whatever. This is what I do. Mm-hmm. I will, uh, if I'm running the marathon and on mile 20, I've never, I've trained for a marathon, never run the marathon. But if I were on mile 20 and I felt like shit, what am I going to do? Stop and, 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 and get on a bicycle and, and go get some ice cream. No, you're going to go, you're going to throw yourself across the finish line because you're teaching yourself to finish. And you're teaching yourself to show up for yourself and you're teaching yourself that you can keep going even when it's not good. This does not apply to dating. I got, I mean, you know what I'm saying? I mean, if, if you have, if you're in an abusive relationship, this is not what we're talking about. Okay. But I'm tired and lovemaking and all that. I'm saying when you're writing, there are going to be a lot of days where it, it just doesn't feel good. And there are going to be days where it feels glorious. You know, and there are going to be days that you, you, yeah, I know the story. And there are going to be days that like, I don't know what I'm doing. And you got to keep showing up. Every artist I know who I, uh, who I admire, you know, in the past and, you know, colleagues and stuff, we, we, we have to train. We, that's the, that's part of the training. That's part of the discipline. So you, all you need to do, MC, is two pages a day. That's all you need to do. You, when's your writing time? In the morning? You like writing in the morning? Great. Get up in the morning. What's two pages? What is that? What is it, like a thousand words? I don't know. Is that like a thousand? Okay. Boom. You got two pages, double spaced, right? 12 point. Two pages a day. Just throw yourself across the finish line. Get done. And then you go know, like at least I and you can write on the last empress. You can work on that novel or story, whatever it is. You can also work on that. You have plenty of time during the day. Yeah, I do. Okay, I got. I just got to stick to it and yeah. keep the promise to myself. Keep the promise to yourself, for better or for worse. This is the valley of the shadow of yucky writing. Man, thank you. I've been there. 
Look to your left, look to your right, look ahead of you, look behind you. It's populated with all kinds of artists. We're all trudging along on any given day. You're not alone. All right. Oh, so thank you for well, making me not feel so alone. Yeah. Oh, no, you're right. Where you're right. I had a, a shitty morning this morning. I was like, what the fuck? I'll be back there tomorrow. Yep. Because that's the only way I know how to get anything done. If I keep abandoning projects, then I'm going to have a whole bunch of things that I didn't finish instead of a whole bunch of books on my shelf that I wrote. And if you write a shitty draft, you have it, you're giving yourself a chance to make it better. If you don't write a draft at all, there's no way you're going to make it better. Right. You got to, you know, rewriting is a, it was a wonderful thing, you know? Okay. Great. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Thanks, MC. Is it? I have, we have, I'm going to try this thing again. This uh, suggestion for your digestion, AKA the Watch Me Work tip of the week. And I'm going to repeat something that I said a couple of weeks ago. Um, again, we talked about the fact that you have a choice and you have a chance, right? You have a chance to do your work. And so make the choice to do your work. And I want to lift up and honor the name uh the person of a guy called nathan lewis jackson who is an amazing writer amazing playwright he wrote a plays like brokeology which was at lincoln center he's a juilliard grad he's a wonderful righteous brother kind brilliant soul um i worked together with him on uh, doing a tv show genius aretha he passed away recently young brother okay so if you have if you're lucky enough to have the opportunity to do your work, if you're lucky enough to, the, to have the opportunity to pursue your heart's desire or follow your bliss or your dream thing, right? Writing that novel, that play, that short story, that film, whatever. Um, take the chance, make the choice, do the work so that we can know you, so that you can sing your song, right? So I'm just sending some love out to Nathan. Lewis Jackson, um, and uh, and all of you, and all of you. Okay, it's uh, almost six o'clock. We're it's gonna almost six o'clock. We need to connect about dates, and we will get back to everyone. So look on the Public Theater and HowlRound websites for our next set of Watch Me Work dates, and we'll see you all very soon. Thank you. Thank you. Have a great week. We'll see you again. Bye. Bye.